Good morning and welcome to worship. We are gathered as the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church and I am Pastor Eric Swanson. This Sunday is the Transfiguration of Our Lord. As we look ahead to the coming week, please remember that on Wednesday, the season of Lent begins with the celebration of Ash Wednesday. We will have an Ash Wednesday worship service here at church in person that will be um, Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. and we'll also have an online Ash Wednesday worship service available. For the in-person service, we will celebrate Holy Communion and we will also observe the imposition of ashes as we remember those words from Scripture, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. So please join us for Ash Wednesday worship. Then on the Wednesdays after that, uh, beginning on March 9th, we will have our regular Wednesday Lenten worship services. And this year we will have uh, Lenten suppers. So we'll join together and have the meals uh, starting at about 545 or six o'clock. So we invite you to please come for the meals and then worship for those Wednesdays will be at 630. We will have the meals catered this year. We're not having soup suppers, so we'll have the meals catered. So it would be very helpful if you would please call and let us know that you plan on participating in those Lenten meals starting on March 9. And then we could have a count and know how many meals that we will be sharing. We're not done yet with our fellowship hall, so when we gather for those Wednesday Lenten meals, we'll gather in our fireside room, uh, not downstairs in the fellowship hall. And maybe by early April that will be available to us. But it would be great to have you join us for the Wednesday Lenten meals. And if you can't be here in person, we will have uh, Wednesday uh, Lenten worship services available online as well. And then one last thing, please do remember that on the second and fourth Sunday of each month, we will be having adult forum gatherings for some discussions. In the weeks ahead, we'll be taking a look at the book um, Wholehearted Faith by Rachel Held Evans. So please consider joining us for those things on the second and fourth Sunday of each month right after our worship service. Welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. People of God, rejoice in this good news. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Jesus Christ. You are inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Exodus 34. Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and as he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, and the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. A reading from 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, beginning with verse 12. Since then, we have such a hope. We act with great boldness. Not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Good morning, Fieldberg families. Today, I'm here with Jesus, and it's transfiguration of Jesus. What is transfiguration? It means to change. And I brought something with me today, and uh, these are solar lights. And during the day, when they're out in your ground, all day long, the sun is energizing the battery inside. So then at nighttime, when you walk, on the sidewalk or near your driveway, you have a light. And Jesus is like that for us. He's the light. He guides us and changes us so that we can follow the path. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for helping us change to be more like Jesus, to make us loving and caring people. Thank you for listening. We are happy you are the light in the world. And all God's people say, Amen. 
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and they went up on the mountain to pray. And while Jesus was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to Jesus. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. And while Peter was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, then Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent. And in those days, they told no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met Jesus. And just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once, my son shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth, and it mauls him and will scarcely leave him alone. I begged your disciples to cast out this demon, but they could not. Jesus answered, you faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. And while he was coming, the demon dashed the boy to the ground in convulsions, but Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I would like you to see and hear and know something that I think is really important. In the last four or five weeks, you, the people of Fieldburg, you have been a gift to me. It's not just one thing. It, it's been many things. Just last Sunday, worship attendance was good, really good. Now, I know that we all understand that the right answer, the biblical answer, is that wherever two or three are gathered in the name of Christ, then Christ is there. But still, when more than two or three are gathered, then we get to see more of the body of Christ held together in faith and trust. And, and for me, that's a joy. It's a joy, I think, for a lot of us when we see each other together, gathered as the people of Christ. So please, keep coming. We need each other. And in the last few weeks, we've been having children's messages, certainly in our online, but also at our in-person worship services and we've been starting up Sunday school gatherings again. And then this last Sunday, we had several of our high school youth involved in leading the worship service. We're building things up again, humble beginnings to be sure, but still, you are gathered. You are here. Kids and young families still come and participate in worship. We still trust and believe that the living God has life and promise for us all. 
it's been great to see it and be part of it. We are people that still gather to worship. We still believe that when we gather, Christ is here with us. We, this, this gathered community, we are members of the body of Christ. And for me, I hope for you, it's been a joy to see one another. Now, while we are a gathering of people drawn together in faith, we're also a community of people drawn together in friendship. So another nice thing that has been happening in the last few weeks is that we've been seeing some wonderful gatherings of people. Joy Seekers were together on this past Tuesday night. We had 24 people together for friendship and joy and food. And then the week before that, we had a gathering for some of our church adults in that 30 to 50 age range. 12 more people came for that. And then this past Friday evening, we had a gathering for those young adults in the 20, 30 age bracket, and we had more people come for that one as well. A community that gathers and cares about each other is a community that wants to get to know each other and spend time together and we take care of these relationships. So because we are the body of Christ, we hold together and we hold each other up in love. And that too, that's a source of joy. I'm remembering these things as I share this message because all of these things are things that I need. I need this gathered community that, that is the face of Jesus Christ for me. You. You are the face of Jesus Christ. And seeing you and being present with you is good for my faith. It sustains me and I hope it's good for you and for sustaining your faith as well. I can't say I have a really good explanation for all of that. I, I don't know how to put exact words around everything that I'm trying to say, because really, if only 20 or 30 people gathered for worship, Christ is still here, and we're still the body of Christ, and it is still good. If we don't have a children's message, or if we don't see a lot of kids here on Sunday morning, it's harder, but God still loves us and our worship is still real. So like I said, I don't really have a perfect explanation for all that I'm trying to say. I'm just telling you that sometimes there are experiences that lift you up, hold you up, and sustain you. And in these recent weeks, you have been that for me. I think we all need those things. We need those moments or those places or people that give us a glimpse of the wonder and the majesty of God, the God who comes close. We need those things that give us a hint that Jesus is present right here in this group and, and right here for each one of us. It's the reason we keep coming back. It's the reason we keep doing this Christian thing. There are these moments and these places and these people that remind us that there's truly something bigger than, than just me, something bigger than just a fleeting instant in time. In these holy things and in these holy gatherings, we get a, a glimpse of the transcendent and the eternal. There are these places and times where it seems like heaven and earth have, have come together, like there's maybe no separation between them. In the Celtic tradition, the phrase for that, uh, these are known as thin places. Places where it seems like the dividing line between heaven and earth has gotten very thin. Places where we see and hear and know, practically touch the presence of God. We need those thin places where God is near because those things, 
they sustain us on the way. Our gospel story today is really a story about a moment where Jesus and Peter and James and John were at one of those thin places. Heaven and earth have touched each other. It happens in the context of a gathering. Peter, James, and John, two or three, have gathered in the name of Christ, and in fact, Christ is there. And the story happens in a place where God comes near. Because in a Bible story, whenever you go up on a mountain, you can always say that you know God is going to show up. And the story happens in the context of prayer. Or we could even say it's worship. Jesus has gone up on the mountain to pray, to communicate with God the Father. And in this thin place, giants of the faith show up. Moses and Elijah appear there on the mountain with them, and they're speaking with Jesus about his, his journey, his exodus that will go to the cross and then to new life. It's an exodus that will set all of us free from our bondage to death. What a moment this is. What a place this is for Jesus and Peter and James and John. Heaven and earth meet the right now and the forever of all eternity, they come together and they, they touch in this strange and mysterious moment. And the moment, this moment, it leaves Peter stumbling and fumbling. What do you do in a moment like this? What do you say? And, and Peter blurts out, Jesus, how about if I put up some tents for us? It probably wasn't the right thing to say. But what do you say when you're glancing at eternity, touching the earth? But then, just then, God speaks into the moment. God speaks this one simple line. This is my son. My chosen, listen. God doesn't speak doctrines or theology or rules or, or have arguments with the people. God speaks and it's identity and belonging. This one, this one is my son. What's kind of amazing is Jesus doesn't add more to the moment. Jesus doesn't fill in with some extra words or explanations or interpretation. The moment just is what it is. It is a thin place where the presence of God has come near. This moment this glimpse of the divine, it, it comes like a cloud and it surrounds them and it holds them. But the thing is, you don't get to just live and stay on the mountaintop. Not every day gets to be a mountaintop experience. Those are moments and, and just moments, just glimpses of the divine. But we need those moments. They hold you. They sustain you. Peter, James, and John, they need this moment to sustain them for everything that lies just ahead in the story. They're going to go back down the mountain the very next day. They'll rejoin the other disciples. That next day, they'll have this uncomfortable reminder that ministry in everyday life doesn't always go the way they want. 
there is that boy possessed by some kind of evil that won't let him go. And those other disciples, it seems that they can't figure out how to fix it. Maybe they don't have the skill or the ability, or maybe they don't have the faith to chase away the evil. They can't do this on their own. They need Jesus. And with Jesus there, the boy's life is restored to health. I've seen some of that in the last few weeks as well. One evening this past month, um, our confirmation youth volunteered at our food pantry. Of course, we can't do it all alone. There were other volunteers there from the community. There was a whole pile of food there that had been donated from other churches in the area. Our job, our part of the task on that evening in everyday ministry and everyday discipleship, our task was to sort the food and check for date codes and put it away on the shelves. We can't do the whole ministry by ourselves. But in that, in that evening of working and being together, once again, I saw glimpses. I saw the body of Christ at work. I saw kindness and care for our neighbors. I saw people striving and working together. I saw appreciation in the people who came and received food. I saw joy and fellowship and cooperation among all the people who were there that evening. It was a gift. It was maybe one of those thin places where God comes near. But of course, we didn't solve world hunger that evening. There are still big problems ahead of us on this journey that we can't fix them by ourselves. We need Jesus. We need to change the hearts and the minds of people to shift our priorities around so that justice and compassion for all people become more important than just getting what I want for myself. To cast out those demons, we're going to need Jesus. We're going to need the one who can transform and transfigure us. But still, Still, the mountaintop moment, that glimpse of God's people working together in kindness and compassion, the vision of joy and concern for each other, that vision, that mountaintop moment, it sustains me. I think it sustains others on our journey. But when we come to those thin places, not everything is all easy and simple. Those thin places, they also come with a complicated reality. Because this life, life right now, life here on earth is not the same as life in the presence of God. When Jesus was up there on the mountain, Jesus was talking with Moses and Elijah, but he was talking about his departure, his exodus from this life. The journey ahead for Jesus is going to include new life, resurrected life. But first, in this life, Jesus will pass through suffering and death. That thin place carries with it some painful truth. A few weeks ago, I was at the funeral for my cousin Garth. There is a lot of sadness when someone dies. I, I think it's especially true when someone dies at an age that we think is too early or when, like my cousin Garth, Someone dies with children still living at home. So there we were. A whole lot of earthly reality all bound up in the moment. There is grief and loss 
and, and there's uncertainty. And there was that struggle of facing up to our own mortality. And I'd even have to say there was maybe some anger and some hurts. And with all of that raw and real earthly human stuff, we gathered. We gathered as ordinary people in the presence of God and in the presence of one another. And we prayed. We prayed like Jesus prayed when he was up on that mountaintop. We worshiped God, the God who made us and the God who will make us new. And in that space, God's holy word was read and proclaimed into the moment and we were fed at Christ's holy table. And at the end of that funeral worship service, my cousin Garth's wife, Amy, and their three boys, they all picked up the box holding Garth's remains. And they held on to each other. And God held on to them. And we joined together. And in our grief and in our hope, we sang, Earth and all stars, loud rushing planets, sing to the Lord a new song. On that day, in that church, we came to one of those thin places where heaven and earth come close together. We got a glimpse of the presence of God. We didn't get answers to all of life's big questions. We didn't get an explanation as to why some people live long, long lives and, and others die too soon. And like that day on the mountaintop with Peter and James and John, Jesus didn't speak to us and tell us everything we wanted to know and tell us what it all meant. On that day, the mysteries remained as mystery. But in the moment, in the moment, there was promise that all our grief, all our despair, will one day be transfigured, transformed into hope and new life. We got a glimpse of the glory of God. We need that glimpse of God's glory. It holds us. It reminds us. It keeps us believing. And it gives us strength to continue our journey. It makes us willing to take the risk to continue on. Amen.
God has shown us how good God is and poured out great things upon us. And we have responded by sharing those good gifts so that the ministry and the work of this congregation and all of Christ's church can be strengthened in the world. So we join together in our offering prayer. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to you. Nourish us with heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Knowing that God has poured out the Holy Spirit upon us in abundance, we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. God of greatness, let your whole church see glimpses of your glory. Fill us with awe, then send us down the mountain to do the ministry of daily life. And confident that you are with us, send us to feed and to heal, to protect the vulnerable and to strive for peace. God of majesty, show us the towering mountains and the bright shining sun. By their majesty and glory, remind us that you are great. Make us so aware of your presence in the world that we treat your creation with reverence and respect. God of peace, guide the leaders of the world to oppose the ways of violence and war. Give your aid and protection to the people of Ukraine. Transform and transfigure all people and all nations so that we put aside our weapons and instead place our trust in acts of mercy, kindness, and love. God who restores, come close and show yourself to us so that we have hope when we are suffering or in pain. Grant courage to those who are abused, give healing to those who are sick, and comfort those who grieve. We remember especially all whom we name to you. transform their lives and fill them with hope. God who is with us on the way, be with this congregation in our journey of daily life. Show us your glory so we are sustained in our work, in our families, at school, and in our community. Guide us to love our neighbors and show that love and show your glory to others. Eternal God, transform us to trust in the promise of new life. By the exodus journey of Jesus to death and to new life, lead us also to the hope and the promise of new life in you. Loving God, we are filled with great hope in your promises, and so we lift our prayers in confidence and in faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.